Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Jack Black returns for more high-flying, death-defying shenanigans in Kung Fu Panda 3, another installment in the visually arresting and perfectly amusing series regarding anthropomorphic animals performing martial arts in a stylized version of ancient China. Now, if you're new to the franchise and that description just made your head explode, let me reassure you, it all works and it's perfectly good fun. If you enjoyed the previous two films, then this third offering provides more of the same. Like, the very same. While gorgeous to behold and full of stylistic 3D eye candy, the story follows very familiar beats. Again, throws so much money away on an all-star cast that just gets deeper and more expensive with each chapter and ultimately stands as solid yet unchallenging entertainment for the younger set that won't bore their parents to death. Pixar is still the best in the business at engaging the entire audience, at creating tears as well as belly laughs. These panda movies and the other DreamWorks franchise regarding dragons are sort of the best of the also-ran category. Kung Fu Panda 3 is a visual stunner, but it also provides enough chuckles and charm and fun action sequences to make this a fun outing with the kids. Pixar has set the bar pretty high for animated entertainment. Kung Fu Panda 3 runs at the bar full speed, knows it can't jump over it, just drop kicks the bar 50 feet away and then tries its best to convince you that uh, it meant to do that. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. Let's start with the major positives. This movie is beautifully rendered in richly detailed 3D. Its visual appeal is the real main attraction here and worth the ticket price alone. The world on display, a fully realized world full of Asian design motifs, reminiscent of Asia, but otherwise wholly fantastical and full of magic and wonder is truly breathtaking. It's an old theater adage that no one walks out of a show humming the scenery. Well, here that's exactly what I'm doing. This thing looks perfect and I was in awe the entire time. Flashbacks and scenes that take place in characters' memories take on different animation styles and montages splash color across the screen with impressive flair. If the visual element was the be-all and end-all of a film, then Kung Fu Panda 3 would get my highest marks. But a movie, even a kid's movie, has to have a plot, unfortunately, and this one is just another variation on the plots of the previous movies in the series. Poe, the panda, has to learn one thing before it was inner peace, before that it was a finger hold move, here it's the power of chi, and a bad guy appears that, wouldn't you know, can only be defeated with the one thing that Poe has to learn. Here, that bad guy is played by Oscar winner J.K. Simmons, and unlike the more memorable villains played by Ian McShane and Gary Oldman in the previous films, he's really not that memorable of a character. Sure, he looks great, like a big, charging, angry bull, with crazy glowing green knife weapons. Those are pretty cool. And he's got great theme music, sort of a Western style bouncy motif that keeps popping up on the score by Hans Zimmer whenever he shows up on screen. But he's just not that compelling of a character. And as such, he's sort of a waste of J.K. Simmons' talents. He just kind of blusters around and boasts and lets Jack Black get in all of the punchlines. You must be the dragon warrior. How about you spare me the chit chat? I'm going to take your uh, chit chat in the chitty chitty chat chat in chat 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 in the chit chat. But nowhere is the waste of talent more apparent than with the supporting cast of sidekicks, no pun intended, for Poe. As in the first two movies, they're all played by huge stars: Seth Rogen, David Cross, Lucy Liu, Jackie Chan, and Angelina Jolie. All of them were put to pretty good use in the first movie and more or less cashed a paycheck for the second. Here, I can at least report that Cross, Rogan, and Jolie's characters are all given their own small moments and can therefore sort of justify their paychecks, which I've got to imagine are huge. A few jokes, a few lines for each of them. You gotta get in there. But Master Chief, you're said seriously afraid? Even Master Chicken's going in there, and he's a chicken. <laughs> but, uh,. Jackie Chan and Lucy Liu? Hell, they barely even speak in this one. And no, it's not about race, so don't start a hashtag or anything. James Hong is still heavily featured as Mr. Ping, and he's still delightful. 
They are just not needed for the story, but DreamWorks seems to have shot themselves in the foot hiring so many big name voices on the first one, and now they're stuck paying these huge stars for each movie. Heck, the character of Uwe, the turtle, has more speaking lines than Monkey and Viper combined, and he's been dead for the last two movies. Most of the heavy lifting in the plot is done by Jack Black as Poe and the new character of Lee Shen, Poe's long lost biological father. He's played by Emmy winner and Academy Award nominee Brian Cranston. So, you know, more money, money, money. They just keep throwing away money. Oh, and there's another new character. She's got about four lines, and those four lines inexplicably had to be voiced by an Academy Award nominee. Whoa, these people have so much money to just be throwing around. I wonder if this movie will make a profit. Yeah, probably. Kung Fu Panda 3 is exactly as good a movie as it needed to be, no more. I awarded a medium bag of popcorn for the visual spectacle alone. See it on a big screen, in 3D, or really don't even bother. It doesn't shake up the status quo, justify its use of a truly all-star cast, or even take itself all that seriously. But I enjoyed what I was looking at the entire time, and I got a few chuckles, and for that I'd give it a mild recommendation. That does it for Movies That Pop. Don't forget, you can follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. Also, please take just a moment to click the icon right down there to visit our page. You can watch more of our videos there and even subscribe so you'll find us easier next time and never miss a review. So please, subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and enough chitty chitty chat chat. I'm out of here, baby!